Hello, everyone. Today's gospel reading will be from the Gospel of John, chapter 16, verses 29 through 33, where it is written, His disciples said, Ah, now you're speaking plainly and not using figurative speech. Now we know that you know all things and do not need anyone to question you. This is why we believe that you came from God. And Jesus answered them, Do you not believe? Behold, the hour is coming. Indeed, it has come when you'll be scattered, each to his own home, and will leave me alone. Yet I am not alone, for the Father is with me. I have said these things to you that in you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but take heart, I have overcome the world. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And so we see Jesus is honest. You will leave me alone. You will abandon me. But I am not alone, for the Father is with me. And this is so powerful. If there's a theme that runs through the Bible, particularly in the Old Testament, it's that people keep on messing up and they keep on alienating themselves from God. But then they come to their senses. They come to their senses and go, "What am I doing? Huh? Is there a way to get back to God? God, please forgive me. Please, God, let's start again." That's the basic story of the Bible. And here, Jesus absolutely brings this basic theme, this basic uh, uh, repeating story, to the ultimate climax. He is the God of the Old Testament, not a prophet or messenger of God, but he is God. It takes 12 guys, trains them up for three years. Then he tells them the last time they're going to see each other before he dies. Oh, by the way, guys, you will always abandon me. Gee, thanks, Jesus. But Jesus is not alone. He and the Father are one. The Father is with them. The Spirit, too. They're all together. Am I going off to die? I'll grant forgiveness to the same apostles that abandoned him. I'll forgive them and take them back. So in this moment, we have the ultimate uh, theme of the Old Testament brought to fruition. When you have messed up, when you've done the dumbest thing, when no one ever want you back, Jesus says, wait, I want you back. Whatever's happened between you and me, it's forgiven. Now come back to me. That's what Jesus tells his apostles in advance. He knows it's going to happen. He says, you're still welcome back. It's also the same offer our Lord makes to us. He knows what we will do in advance. And he still says, I love you. I forgive you. I want us to be back together. So with Dagon rising, he gives us a chance for forgiveness. He gives us a chance to repent and to rejoin him. So just like in the Hebrew Scriptures, being alienated from God and desire to be returned, that's the story here in the Gospel text, and it's the story of our lives. We can flee from God. People do it. But God always chases them. I remember Psalm 23, you know, surely your goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. Follow is not quite accurate uh, transliteration of the Hebrew. A more accurate uh, being would be your goodness and mercy will, will chase me, will pursue me throughout my life. Odd, like a pursuer, someone chasing you. That's God's love, God's mercy. No matter how far off the path you get. And Jesus Christ is willing to forgive you when you repent and take you back. We truly do have God of love, thankfully. As evidence here, and as evidence by our Lord going to the cross and coming back to life for us. So wherever you're at, whatever you're doing, repent and know you're right with God. Let us close with prayer. Lord, I'm glad that you know everything, God. So we don't need to uh, physically verbalize the things we've done to run away from you.
because that's painful enough, oh God. Thank you, God, for loving us. Thank you, God, for forgiving us. And thank you, God, for giving us new life in you. Amen.